Welcome back to the Cartoonist Studio. It's been a fortnight. I know it has. Don't argue with me. I've seen the evidence. I've seen the calendar. I perused it. Uh, anyway, this fortnight, we're going to be going back to a cartoon I drew a long time ago when, when the world was black and white and dinosaurs ruled the earth and I was very young. And it's one of my most popular cartoons. In fact, it is the most popular cartoons that I have records for. But more about that in the video. The rest of the video will be filled up with general dribble and rubbish, the kind of stuff that you've come used to from me. And if that's the kind of content that you like, then hit the notification bell, click like, tell YouTube, do whatever you got to do, and I'll keep coming back. And uh, that'll be fun, won't it? Right, should we go and draw some pictures? Yes, let's do that. Hello and welcome back to the Cartoonist Studio. Yes, we're here again and we're doing stuff. Um, today, well, I'm I'm actually redrawing an old cartoon. Um, reason I'm doing it is it's become possibly the most, well, it, no, not possibly, it has become the most popular cartoon I've ever done on my cartoon stock site. And when I say my cartoon stock, it's not mine. I just have a page on it, one of many cartoonists. And I've mentioned cartoon stock before, and there'll be um, a link in the description below. Did you see what it did there? I was like a real YouTuber again. I tell you, I'm getting quite good at this now. And uh, yeah, right down down below, that there'll be a link to it. And what it what it is is effectively loads of cartoonists. They all send their jokes in and their gags in and their ideas, and um, it gets offered. You, you get a page effectively, and that's what the link below will be. A link to my page. No point. Giving you a link to everyone else's. Oh, for God's sake, shut up, Dixon. You're just waffling again. So, no one wants to do this. You're boring them to You're boring me to death. Good Lord. Sorry, Colonel. I'll be quiet. Anyway, they offer you this this page and, uh, and and they sell it around the world. They effectively sort of say, you know, hold the cartoon up and say, hello, world, this is the cartoon, cartoon, hello, this is the world. Everyone get together, mingle, and um, and see what happens. And this particular one has sold, oh God, I did have the figures somewhere. It's between 50 and 70 at 75 times, somewhere around that. So it effectively means that between 50 and 70 people have seen this cartoon and thought, oh no, I'll have that. And they've used it for a variety of reasons, whether it be a um, greeting card or something for a blog or what else would they use it for? Um, to illustrate purposes, a lot of medical people have used it. Uh, we'll get back into the subject matter in a minute. But basically, if you've got this cartoon stock site and you've got a, you're looking for a specific type of cartoon, you put in a variety of questions and up come the options that best fit your search, like every other search engine, I guess. And this one has just been. Really popular. I'm not saying it's the most, the biggest selling one on cartoon stock site. By far, it probably isn't. But for me, it's a good one. So, this is, I thought I'd, I'd redraw it and show it you. And um, yeah, just a little bit of fun. It's that, it was actually originally drawn for when I did, a, when I was on social media all those all those years ago, when, uh, when I didn't know any better. Um, I had this cartoon strip called Noodle Pates. And it was effectively it was a single panel gag. There's a there's a collection of them on my Amazon site. A collection of about uh, oh I forget now about 175 cartoons I think. I don't know what it is. There'll be a link below for it anyway. Well, a link for my YouTube, uh, sorry my Amazon page, and it'll be in amongst all the all the drivel I put on there. So I did this cartoon, and one of them. Was this particular gag and i think it it sort of got the same sort of reaction that most other ones did maybe a bit more i don't know so there was no indication that it would be anything unusual should we say out of what i normally draw but stick it on cartoon stock and boom 
it just explodes so uh yeah there we go but cartoon stock actually oh sorry not cartoon stock sorry noodle pates the cartoon now that actually is uh is is a medieval word it actually means like a, an idiot or a fool or someone stupid you know noodle as in twisted and pate as in the head so noodle pate i quite like it basically for for idiotic or daft people which kind of sums up me and, and my my jokes so yeah suited it well so anyway uh that was and in amongst that i drew this every now and again i'd have, to, I'd have some set characters and one of them was uh well, two of them were Adam and Eve, and they eventually became so popular I put them out as a cartoon strip. And I drew them for ages until Facebook decided to throw me off for, because someone hacked me. And there's a whole different story. There, there'll be a link in the description below as to how I got kicked off social media, and it wasn't my fault, it was someone else's. But um, you want to find out about that? Well, go and look, look into it anyway. Moving along from that, have you all had an exciting two weeks? I hope you are. I've had a very, very busy one. Um, what have I been doing? Oh, yes, I remember. Yes, yes. I, would, I was told I got about two years before I go blind. <laughs> yeah, I got my attention too. I go for these eye tests because I'm of a certain age. And uh, and the it was a specialist, not an optician. It, well, obviously, he's an optician, but he's a specialist, to his say. So he gave me all, all these tests and I went in there and he, he sort of said, right, OK, we'll have to give you eye drops. And I said, right, any particular reason? He said, yes, he said, there's way too much pressure on the optical flubby jubby wob dip a little foddle waddle or something like that. It was technical anyway. And, uh, and I said, all oh, right, OK. He said, yeah, otherwise you'll get a, a, a glaucoma. I said, oh, yeah, I'd heard the word glaucoma. I said, that's that, that's that's the blind thing, isn't it? He said, yes. And I, I said, right, well, oh dear. So does that kind of mean like in, you know, in, in a couple of years time, I'm two years, three years, four years, five years, I'll be blind. Well, two years, we can't really tell. I thought, blimey, two years time, I'm going to be blind. And uh, whew, that was a bit weird. Anyway, it turns out that his bedside manner is basically the same as Dr. Crippin's. He's absolutely useless. It wasn't as bad as that. I then went to see my optician. And uh, I think you'd call them ophthalmologists in, in America. Not sure. Basically, it's someone who looks at your eyes anyway. And um, strange, they've all got glasses, though, isn't it? I noticed that all opticians have got glasses. <laughs> Not a very good advertisement, is it? Anyway, she said, no, 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 he doesn't mean that. No, what he means is. And then he explained to me that this, these eye drops are to stop the pressure developing, which could lead to glaucoma. And if I call or caught it, or whatever it is, if glaucoma develops, should we say, then it could take decades before I was blind as a bat. So, whew, that was a bit of an exciting week, but yours wasn't that exciting. So uh, that's that, That's what I've been doing, and uh, what else have I been doing? I'll be doing all sorts of things. Half the stuff you can't publish on here. But uh, yeah, been out having some fun. So tell me about your week. Write it down below. One of these days you'll shock the living daylights out of me and do that. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the penciling bit now. And uh, like I said, I can never understand why this why this one of all the cartoons I drew would be more popular. But then I guess if I knew that, um, I'd only be drawing the popular cartoons. But the the subject matter was um, was was pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> Not necessarily a, a particularly delightful subject, but um, but there we go. That's what it was, and people liked it, and they said, "We'll have ten thousand of those," and um, and who am I to complain? So uh, right, well, it's, like I said, we're almost coming to the end of the penciling stage now. So I guess this is the point where I, where I say. Um, like a proper YouTuber, if you like this kind of rubbish, I mean, this kind of material, then why don't you go along and subscribe? And whilst you're down there fiddling with controls and buttons, hit the notification bell. It doesn't make a noise, but, you know, imagine one going ding dong in your own ears and, and you're almost there. So whilst you're down there, it has a drop down menu and click all. And that means it'll YouTube will send you everything that I do. I mean, everything. 
a lot of stuff they can publish anyway. And uh, that, that would be wonderful. I'd be so happy, eternally grateful, in, in fact. So um, that said, we shall now be disappearing off to the, to the other bit, to the inky bit, and I suppose I'll be inking it. And I'll probably be waffling a little bit more, so I shall just go a little bit quiet now for the last few seconds, and I shall see you over on the other side of the video. Speak to you very, very soon. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? Longest I've been quiet for a long time. And uh, right, so now we're on to the inking stage and uh, I'm using a slightly thicker brush than normal. Reason being, it's a single panel. I draw it larger and when it gets reduced, uh, the lines aren't quite so thin and wispy. Very important when being produced. In magazines and stuff or on mugs that's another thing it was used for i found out on mugs uh so yeah um so yes you have to use the right brushes for the right techniques i guess and i uh, see this brings me up to something else i forgot i have been up to something else i was asked by a local business these are people that i know they have an old railway line uh, back before they closed them down in the 50s I think it was and a lot of these places got made into homes or just trashed and gotten rid of and people built houses where they were but like I say some of them they they kept either housing or in this case as a business now they have a cafe they've got train carriages there where people go and sit in and and they can look out over the woodlands and the river that's nearby and they can bird watch and very very nice there's a little gallery in there and there's a gift shop and some picnic tables outside. It's a generally nice place to be. And they had, I don't know, it was some kind of a, just a, a general function day, should we say. They had a little band there playing folk music and not everyone's taste, but they were actually pretty good, pretty jumpy and jaunty. I quite enjoyed them. And they'd have some, um, some wine tasting. I think there was some brandy and whiskey tables and someone had a beer tent and uh yes it was it was all very inebriated come towards the end of the day i wasn't involved i went home but apparently it got very messy not long after i left uh people had to sleep where they were good job it was a nice day a nice day but anyway they asked me would i like to come along and sell my books and talk to people about my cartoon so i said yeah why not we'll give it a go and uh, I did quite well. I took the books along with me. I've got quite a few books now, I suppose, out there on Amazon. Link down below. You see, there I go again. I'm off. And uh, yeah, did extremely well. I think I sold, I don't know how many books I sold now. Quite a few anyway. So I'm going there this week and doing it again. There's a car boot sale, so there should be even more fools, I mean people, there that I can sort of fleece, fleece from their pocket money. And uh, but also during the course of that, you get people who like what you do and they might go along and see what else I do. And uh, I got asked by someone who came, it was someone was there, someone from America. I don't think he came over from America just to see me, but he was from America and he said he, he does a podcast. And would I come along and talk to him about my business? So I said, yeah, why not? So that, that was good fun. And uh, yeah, so I, I did that as well. That besides the facts of uh, being scared after death, thinking I was about to go blind. And uh, oh yes, the other thing is, is once again, the window's closed because it's not as hot as it was last time we spoke, but it's uncomfortable enough this time of the year without the window open. Because once again, like I explained last time, we got a private school behind where I live and there's a lot of uh, private school students playing tennis. Now, I know a couple of weeks before their their end of term sort of be gone for about nine weeks or what have you, and you think, oh, great, fantastic, it'll be nice and quiet for you. But it isn't. Got a bunch of foreign students coming over there and doing exactly the same things that the normal students did, except lessons, but they spend an inordinate amount of time over in the tennis courts. So I have to deal with them, I'm afraid. But anyway, so... Whereas I think I explained that we get a lot of uh, 
rather sort of posh students sort of saying, Oh, I say, Sean Monty, that was a wonderful shot. Oh, don't think so. Oh, yes, absolutely. But your mother was so proud. And all that kind of stuff. We won't have that anymore. We'll have a bunch of, I don't know, French students, I guess. And I guess they'll say, as that was a very, very, very good shot, Charmondele. Is it? I think so. I think it was wonderful. I've been practicing that shot for a long time. Your mother, she will be so happy. Or well, something like that. Not quite sure. But uh, I'll record it and let you know. So, yeah, so I guess I've got that to look forward to in the next few weeks. And um, they've actually got me over there teaching cartoon classes. So that'll be unusual. I'll mess with other minds, non non YouTube minds, but you never know. They might come and join us. God, I hope not, because they'll probably hear that what I've just said about them, won't they? Ah, that'll be fun. It'll be too late. I'll have gone by then. I'll have been paid and disappeared out of the country. I'll be hiding somewhere in Mexico. Um. Yeah. So there we go. So this is. The, I, I, we've been moving on here, haven't we, with the car too? Whilst I've been waffling away, those hands have been going like like greased lightning. They have. Producing stuff. Don't, don't put that other gel in. You see, this is a different one. Normally, I sit there and I draw on a waffle. I had about six attempts at this damn picture, and I just could not um, think of anything to say. For once, I was struck dumb. I've no idea why. I just was completely struck dumb. Couldn't think of a damn thing to say. So I had to keep redrawing it and starting again and hoping like hell that something would come to me, and it didn't. So I thought, you know what? I'll draw it. I won't say anything, and in a couple of weeks' time, I'll come back to it and I'll overdub, which is pretty much what I'm doing now. And uh, so now I'm looking at it pretty much like you are, with new eyes. I'm thinking, I wonder why I didn't put the jowl in that chicken on the left-hand side, the second jowl, the one my finger is now covering. Get out of the way. See it? Little vague, little... I'm actually pointing at the screen. You can't see me doing that, can you? Little jowl over there. I'm pretty sure I should have put that in. Never mind. Never mind. I obviously did this. But um, actually, whilst I remember this, there was something I saw on YouTube this week. I won't mention names because I, I never mention names, but it was it was this what I might call a Hollywood artist. Is what I, it's the type of person I refer to as a Hollywood artist. She was she was talking. I mean, her art was fine. There was nothing wrong with her art. I'm not sort of criticizing or anything else like that. That's not that side of it. She was she was saying that her husband or partner, he sells comics into the um, comic con stuff like that. And she went along one day and she just had a pictures of, of cats and people quite liked them. And someone came along and said, could you do a picture of my cat dressed as the Green Lantern? So she goes, I thought that would be really exciting. No, she said super exciting because they have to say that nowadays because they're Egypts. And um, so she went away and did this picture and everyone kept coming back saying, oh, my God, that is so cool. That is so amazing. That is so brilliant. And she says, I don't know why everyone doesn't do this kind of thing, because that's what I do now. I sell these things all over the world. It's like a, I went in the next next week and there were 150 million people all queued up wanting a picture of their cat dressed as Batman, Green Lantern and, and Robert Downey Jr. saw one and 174,000 billion trillion zillion people liked it. And so now she makes a fortune from it. And I'm thinking, it's not the way the real world works, my love, but never mind. But she was sort of saying, like, uh, what she likes. She goes, I like it about cats because they have that surprised look. Does anyone know how the cat gets that surprised look? And it was a rhetorical question, but I imagine if she had a room full of cartoonists saying, we know, we know, miss, we don't know. I'm not asking the cartoonists. Never ask a cartoonist a question like that. No, but miss, we know how to make a cat. We know how to make a cat go, whoops. She goes, not listening. So we all disappear in the corner of the room and have giggles and draw pictures about how we think we, we might get a cat to have a surprised expression. And while she's talking to the sensible artist about how you can get a cat to have a surprised expression, we're just giggling. And she'd be sort of saying, like, what are you all doing over there? Nothing, nothing. And she'll come over and say, quick, everyone, remove that thing from behind the cat. That's better. Get out of the cat's back eye. Oh, we'd be in all sorts of trouble. I don't know. Would. Cartoonists have way too much fun. We're not take, we can't take ourselves seriously, and as a result, I don't think the art world takes us very seriously. Right. We're almost coming to the end now. I'm almost going to shut up. And uh, we've got, oh, I'd say about four minutes left. So how can we fill those four minutes? Shall I put some music on?
uh, block it or carry on chatting. So the um, the Kalashnikov kid. She's back. She's been back from a trip to Bulgaria. And um, she's happy. So more, more about that. I did, I did say last time there'd be more about that, didn't I? But there will be more about that very, very soon. And um, I think she's having a family get together and a sing song. I might even record it. Uh, so yes, so she's back. She's happy, and she's um, she's she's out in in the back garden at the moment, trying to deal with the deal with the slug problem. If we listen very carefully, she's got a very unique way of getting rid of slugs because they're eating our lettuce. She's got a very unique way of doing it. If we listen quietly, we'll be able to hear it. Off she goes. <laughs> You missed one. You missed one over there in the corner. And one over there. And there's one up the tree. Ah, there goes the tree. Right, so anyway, yes, that's it. So she, she's having fun out the back there. We're having fun in here. And, um, yeah, coming to the end. So this, this, my dear listener, is the biggest selling cartoon to date that I've ever done on cartoon stock. Can't speak for the rest because I don't normally get figures for them. So hope you liked it. Any questions? That's what the comments box is down for, down below for. So um, let me know. We will we'll be uh, doing another one of my cartoons, you know, those things that I did if I drew dot 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 and then whatever the, the, the cartoon was. Uh, the next one is definitely going to be the Wizard of Id. Like I mentioned before, I've got the joke. I've changed it around a few times, so um, I think I'm quite happy with it now. I'm kind of looking forward to it, but I'm kind of not because although the cartoonist, uh, Brant Parker, wasn't it? Brant Parker, although his style looked very scratchy and simple, looking at it, he didn't actually appear to follow any of the rules that cartoonists do follow when when producing their work so i'm going to have to literally like an animator break his style down and find out how i can fit it into my style or not my style but draw it in do it in a way that i can easily reproduce it regularly so um even though i've always thought brant parker's style to be very simplistic i'm beginning to sort of have a a sneaky admiration for what it was that he did and so we'll have a crack at that. I don't know whether it'll be the next time. If it's not the next time, it'll probably be the time after. So it's either a fortnight or a month away. I'm likely to think it's more likely to be a month because uh, I don't want there to be too short a period between the ones that I do. And although I've only done two so far, Andy Cap and um, Hagar, I want it to be a bit more of a gap because there will be more, lots and lots more. Right, well... Thank you once again for your time. It's been wonderful having you here. I've thoroughly enjoyed our time together. And I hope to see you, uh, not next week, but the week after, with our fortnightly visits. And, um, yeah, let me know what's going on in your life. Let me know if you enjoyed it and keep on coming back for more. Share it. Let everyone know everything about us. And uh, we'll build this channel together. It is building slowly, but not quickly enough. Okay, and with that... I no, actually I won't say goodbye because I've still got oh my god I've still got stuff to do. That false alarm, everyone, sit down as you were. Get back to your seat. Get back. Get back. Come on, you. You at the back. Come on. Guess get back. <laughs> That's better. Well, almost escaped then, didn't it? You thought you were free. Yeah. So um, yeah, but I mean, just just gonna do this little bit here now. But yes, please do share it with with your friends on social media or, or just your friends in general, I guess, because that's how it grows. Uh, YouTube have changed slightly um, their rules, whereby you used to have to have a thousand subscribers before you could market or sell it or sell stuff on it or whatever. You they dropped that down to five hundred, and I'm getting a little bit closer to that stage now. So the sooner we can get up to the five hundred mark, a that's a landmark stage, and the better it'll be for me because I'll be able to start selling stuff, I guess. So uh, yes. Please do, please do help me get up there. Get up to those levels. It'll be great. Right, now I think this definitely is it. 
we're all it's almost over almost done and i didn't do that jowl did i i should go and severely reprimand myself um yeah put myself on the cartoonist naughty step remember the first time i've been there and uh i shall see you in a fortnight where i'll be doing something i don't know what i don't pay any attention to the rubbish i come out with but um it'll be great to see you then anyway so all that's left for me to say is goodbye i guess did i did i finish oh i suppose i must be i'm signing it it's over i'm done well done oh that was quick i enjoyed that hope you did okay see you all very very soon bye bye